But the bioreserve is really unique in that it protects, it, it serves two purposes, biodiversity, which means the species that have always lived here in coastal Massachusetts, southeast, Mass southeastern Massachusetts, south coast, will be able to continue to live here. Uh, you need large landscape for some species. I'll give you an example. Right now, um, Lynn Abbey, who many of you know, do, she does bird walks every Tuesday morning here in the bioreserve. They meet at um, Fighting Rock Corner, and she wants to do some soon, uh, birding after work, she's going to call it, because it's very difficult for her to, to, to get people out. Obviously, a lot of people work in the mornings. But right at this time of year, the warblers and the neotropical songbirds that spend the winter, where actually I think I'd like to spend it, <laughs> down by the Gulf or in Venezuela, <clears throat> Central America, they're all coming back to nest, like scarlet tanagers and oven birds and ruffed grouse and whippoorwills. And you need a, a small little nature area wouldn't help those birds because they're ground nesters. <clears throat> and if you have a small little area, you'd have cats and dogs and people disturbing them. So you need a big forest. So all these warblers and different songbirds are coming back right now. And I've had a little interesting story. I don't know how many people have seen an oven bird, but it's about this big, and it, you know, it's a little warbler. And it, it has a very loud call, teacher, 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 sort of like that. It says, teacher, teacher, teacher. <clears throat> and one time with a group like this of people who rarely get outdoors, we've, you know, we're losing our connection with the with that natural world that we depend on. Anyhow, I was explaining how the oven bird is disappearing. <clears throat> and this bioreserve is important for it to continue on. And, and this woman said, well, she said, I don't see why people had to eat them. Uh, why, why, didn't they, why don't they just buy chicken? Um. And she was thinking, oven bird, <laughs> that go <laughs> and it's called an oven bird because it builds a nest that looks like a little brick oven on the ground, a little round dome. <laughs> so, so that shows you how divorced we are from the natural world in a lot of cases. Um, so these, this is just quickly, the, the bioreserves are 13,000 acres at the moment. Uh, the, the DCR, Department of Conservation and Recreation, owns th this portion of state forest. The city of Fall River owns this. This is the city's watershed to keep those, to, to, that protects. That's the second... Uh, important uh, function of the bioreserve. Uh, the North Ward Tupper and the Copacut Reservoir, this is the city's watershed. The city owns that. And um, Department of um, Fish and Game owns this section over here, which was the Hawes property. And that makes about, and, and the trustees of reservations, where we are down here, owns this piece. So <clears throat> together it makes around 13,000 acres. And DCR just purchased because we're trying to extend. You see this up here? This is uh, Massachusetts Audubon uh, property. <laughs> It's uh, along the Cedar River. It's a big, a beautiful cedar swamp. And they just acquired the state, DCR just acquired this piece to add on to the state forest over here, Lancerra property. So we're making progress, we're trying to reach up to uh, the Cedar River. Now I do have one thing um, that I brought. How many people uh, know what the Massachusetts state flower is? The Mayflower. Okay, it's the Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> now you should know that. Yeah, we should. Now we do. <laughs> when, the, <laughs> when the pilgrims <laughs> landed in Plymouth in 16, okay, 1620, when the pilgrims landed, they, they came off the Mayflower and they, they suffered and had a miserable first winter, if you remember. Yeah, we know. In the spring, <laughs> they found these flowers blooming all along the coast uh, and they named them after their ship. The Mayflower. Uh, the ship had been named after a flower, a totally different flower in England. But they saw the trailing Arbutus, the Mayflower, and they named it after their ship. The le the shortly thereafter, it was declared, matter of fact, Massachusetts was one of the first states to, to have a state flower. And so they, the state picked the Mayflower. And this is the Mayflower. They're rather rare today. Um, you, you shouldn't pick them. We uh, picked these just now. Well, I didn't pick them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a nature police. This is an area that's being developed. It's from an area that's being. There's an. Inner, I'll show you right here on the map. Wait a minute. There's a little. Yeah, I have to defend it. Right here. There's a little in holding on the map. Yeah, and it's being developed for house lots, unfortunately. And although this, you, you can't pick these on public land, they're evergreen. It's an evergreen leaf. And they were picked for wreaths and uh, for garlands and things. And uh, it's very sweet smelling. And they're blooming early this year because of the mild winter and the weather. I'm going to pass it around. 
Uh, so you can smell, it has a very sweet, sweet smell, lovely smell. The Indians would uh, use this blossom uh, and mix it with maple syrup for flavoring. They would also make beverages out of it. You can add the flower to salads. Um, uh, colonial children used to chew You're the... You're supposed to pick it. How can you add it to salads? You, well, back then, you could, <laughs> you, could, uh, you could chew the... Uh, the <laughs> colonial children would chew the blossoms as candy. Smell. All smell. right, you can smell the maple flower. And, oh, and the reason... The reason I brought these two is because not only is it a state flower inside of spring, but we might see these on the walk, and I'd like to find a big figure eight we're going to do. Yeah, good. That's nice and Roger, let me say one thing about, which I was going to do back there, but I got carried away with the Mayflower. Just that these roads that are in here, this is all really neat stuff. Um, this is on city watershed land. We left the trustees' property. And the, 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 uh, the, the lanes have been here. These are farm lanes, a lot of them, from the Barnaby Blossom Farm. If you've been to the city's uh, water department, uh, watershed headquarters on Blossom Road, um, where they've been doing remarkable work restoring it, the, the, the place. Anyhow, that was the Barnaby Blossom Farm. And all of the farmland in the bioreserve was mostly along either the Watupper or over toward the Copica because on the southern end. Because as you go up and closer to Copica Hill, you end up just gravel and rock, you know, that New England bony soil. So this was one of the few places that had really arable, you know, soil and you could, you, could, you could grow crops. And I did write down, and I, I probably left it somewhere. Can't find it now. But I had the, uh, the, just prior to the Civil War, the produce from the Bonneby Blossom Farm, the inventory. And it, it's, it's so meager. It really was hand-to-mouth subsistence far, uh, farming. Um, like 20 bushels of wheat, two cows, one horse, two milk cows, one horse, Two oxen, and they produced so they, they produced one year 50 pounds of butter, um, 30 pounds of which they sold into the city because they you know they need certain staples and things. So it was a hard scrabble life. And other than the farms, when you moved further into the woods, up into here, it was mostly sheep and uh, stay far aside, sheep grazing because you couldn't grow anything, but the sheep will eat the brush, and um, charcoal making. And the charcoal they would sell to the, uh, in, in, at New Bedford and Fall River, to the uh, urban areas for cooking, you know, for, for, so, so people could do their cooking. So it, it really was a, a, a tough existence back then. But they, these roads, the names, Brightman Trail, and named after the Brightman family, along an old family in this area, um, Brightman Street Bridge, obviously, and the Brightman, um, the, the, they're putting a little parking lot on Blossom Road. There's a big European beech tree there. That's the old Brightman Foundation. There's a Brightman house home there, homestead there. Um, the Clint Davis Trail is in here. Davis is another old family. I don't know who Clint was. There's Indian Turn Trail. Well, this was the area just south of here where Benjamin Church settled the Indians that aided him in the King Philip's War. Um, Dead Man's Trail, and that's an intriguing one. And I can't find out. We've asked around. No one seems to know who the dead man was or how the dead man ended up there or what, what the story is on that. But, it, but I was talking to Stephanie earlier, and it would be interesting to have someone... Well, dead, dead men tell no tales. Pull to, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> pull together a history of the bioreserve, of the east side of Fall River, because all the emphasis and all the interest was always on the mercantile, and the industries and the immigrants coming in and all that sort of thing. And um, there is a neat history, uh, uh, abbreviated history, just of the, the trustees' property. It was done by Electa Trich, who was the historian for the trustees of reservations. And when they purchased <clears throat> that section of the bioreserve, the, the, she did a little uh, uh, inventory. She went through the records at the... At the, the trouble is, he, she ran into difficulty because so many of the records were lost in Fall River with multiple fires. And uh, so she had to go to Taunton and Freetown and try to, you know, come in through other 
other ends to find to get her data and her information and stuff. But they're, they're lovely trails, and, and it's a beautiful day, so let's continue on. <clears throat> this trail is what? Is this Brightman or Indian Turn at this point? Does it turn to Brightman at the intersection? Uh, it turns, it, uh, Indian, uh, Brightman turns off Indian Turn goes out to the, uh, out to the road at the gate, right at the uh, Indian Hill Road there. Okay, so I think we're on Brightman.